Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and many of you have asked me to do an overview of Android Oreo, so here is what's new. Now the first thing is on the Google Pixel, it boots two times faster. So let's go ahead and boot it up and see how quickly it boots up. Now it's going to load Android Oreo, which I've been using on this device in beta form for quite some time, and now we're on the final version. Now it's not available to many devices yet, but it is available for Android, and you can see that was pretty quick. So let me put in my pin. Now we're into the OS, we're waiting for everything to come up. It's pretty fast as far as the boot time goes, so that's really nice. So this is a Pixel XL. As you can see here, the operating system is much quicker. Everything feels very fast and fluid. Everything opens and closes quickly, and there's some new features to go along with it. So they've done a lot of background refinements to get this to run really quickly, to allow it to be able to update differently so that when it's on more devices, it can be updated more quickly. We don't have to wait as long for carriers, things like that. Now, with those background limits, with battery and things like that, it keeps things kind of minimized in the background as far as its activity is concerned to save you power. So let's go into the battery. You can see the menu is a little bit different here. If we pull down, it's arranged a little bit differently. So let's go in and take a look at the battery. Now, it's been charged three days ago, and you can see that it's been on standby that entire time. So that part's pretty impressive. So it's been idle for three days, six hours and 47 minutes. And it hasn't been on a lot. I've been using the Note 8 a lot at this point, but it really holds a good charge. It easily gets through the day now, especially with this. It's easily one of the best Android devices because of Android Oreo. Now, one of the new features is it can remember app logins. So if you go to the app store and you download something new, maybe you download a new app and it has a sign in, it will actually, if you allow it to save those logins. So the next time you go into it, it will just auto fill it for you, just like it would on the web with Chrome, it will auto fill it elsewhere. So that part's really nice. Now you can also do two apps at once. So if I open Chrome here and you can see there's Android Oreo, if I tap and hold, I can just pick something else and fill its space. We can also do picture in picture as well. So if we're playing a video or a movie or we have a Google Duo call, we can have it down in the corner, anywhere around. That part's really nice. And you can see how quickly everything moves around in this version. So that's nice as well. Now, I don't have any present, but we do have notification dots. So if we have something new, say an Instagram, it will have a little dot over it. We can tap and hold sort of like Apple's 3d touch only. It doesn't require a special screen, but it feels very similar. There's haptic feedback and it just lights that up. So it's pretty nice. Now, one of the things they've done as well is allow you to get into different apps without actually installing the app. This is kind of a new feature. And let me see if we can go over here and see Instagram and Twitter. We go here and it brings us in as though it was an app and we sign in. So it sort of runs the app without running the app. You can make a shortcut to it and it just saves space on your device. I haven't used this a whole lot yet, but it is an option that's available now. There's also a new Wi-Fi assistant. So you can see I'm on Wi-Fi now. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi assistant and what that allows you to do is basically auto connect you to high quality Wi-Fi and secures it with a VPN back to Google. So these are all these networks around me. Uh, you can secure these to Google, basically uh, allowing only your data to go through. So maybe you're on a guest network somewhere that's open. It will create a VPN tunnel or virtual private network so that nobody else can see or access your data. It's a really nice feature and definitely something that is great about Android Oreo. Now, speaking of security, they now scan the Google Play Store. Uh, over about 50 billion apps a day, according to them. Now, there was a recent story about some apps getting by, but what they're doing is scanning the apps before you actually install them, anything like that, looking for rogue code to protect you against anything like viruses or anything along those lines. So they're doing a good job to help protect you more and more. So there's new notification options as well. So if you pull down, tap and hold on a notification, you've got more settings. So you can go into more settings, and this is for Google Studio or YouTube Studio, and you've got these different notifications. So you want a notification dot, you want a sound on the lock screen or override do not disturb. Things like that are now accessible within those options. So that's a nice little addition and more of a refinement. 
Now for people that love emoji, there are a bunch of new emoji now. So if we were going to text someone or type, we have a bunch of different emoji that are brand new. There's over 60 different ones and I won't show you every single one here and you can get bitmoji and stickers, but here, take a look at Google's website. So you can see there are a bunch of new emoji. This is from the Android Oreo website and you can see there's a bunch of different new ones. So you've got those added as well for those of you that love to use all sorts of different emoji. There's also new accessibility options. So if you go into settings, scroll down to accessibility, you'll see there's some new ones for all sorts of different things, such as select to speak, talk back, font sizes, magnification, all sorts of new ones to really help you if you either can't see well or hear well. And both of those options are here. They've made a big leaps in Android Oreo to help people that have disabilities. And that's a really nice step and something that Android needed a little bit a little bit of improvement on compared to some other phones out there. Lastly, there have been a lot of changes for developers. There's new APIs to help with files, fonts, audio, and all sorts of other things to really help make the experience better. There's audio that's included in code to help you make better use of audio, make better use of high dynamic range displays when they come out. So I, I assume we'll see those on the pixel too. Uh, which should be out shortly. So we have a lot of refinement going on with Android Oreo, not a ton of changes on the outside, just a lot of speed and battery improvements and notifications and things that really just needed to be that much more refined. So right now it's great. It's got a great camera, but there's not a whole lot of other options on the pixel. It's really clean and a great experience. If you found anything though, that I haven't mentioned that you think is pretty major, please leave it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.